Spirit of God puts in my mouth powers that quench light. Powers that quench light. We are in this month or season of light, great light. It's our month of light. It's our month of light. A month of great light. Praise the Lord. It's our season of great light. Praise the Lord. So I want to be talking about the powers that quench light. I'm taking my text from Second Samuel twenty one fourteen to seventeen. Second Samuel twenty one fourteen to seventeen. Let me have it on the screen. And the bones of Saul and Jonathan his son buried. Please can you off this one for me? And the bones of Saul and Jonathan his son buried they in the country of Benjamin in Zela. In the sepulchre of Kish, his father. And they performed all that the king commanded. And after that, God was entreated for the land. Continue. T17. Moreover, the Philistines had yet war again with Israel. And David went down. Somebody said David went down. And his servants with him. And fought against the Philistines. And David's works faint. Somebody said David's works faint. Continue. And each be been up, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed three hundred shekels of brass in weight, he being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. But Abishai said, But Abishai, the son of Zurai, succored him, or succored him, and smote the Philistine and killed him. Then the men of David swore unto him, saying, Thou shalt go no more as with us to battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel. Thou shalt go no more out with us to battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel. Now I want to be showing you the enemies that quench or the powers that quench the light of God. Actually, light symbolizes prosperity. Light symbolizes good things. Actually, the right word is prosperity. Breakthrough. Good things. So, I will be showing you there are powers that quench light. That quench prosperity. That quench good things in people's life. That make people they rejoice today, they cry tomorrow. That will not be your portion anymore in the name of Jesus. So there are enemies of prosperity. If you don't know how to handle and to maintain your light, which is your prosperity, prosperity can be your enemy. If you don't know how to maintain good things in your life, good things can turn to be your enemy. If you don't know how to take control or how to, how to put under control of prosperity of good things, they can be your downfall. It's not only in poverty that devil attack. Devil attack most when there is wealth. Because when there is wealth, people tend to relax. People stop fighting. The Bible said David went down. Can you imagine King David going down? The Bible said he walks faint. He walks faint. Why? Number one. I want to show you the power of relaxation. Why? Number one is the power of, power of re, uh, relaxation. The power of relaxation. Which is the number one enemy that quench the light, that quench your prosperity. The power of relaxation. This thing you say, I want to relax. I want to rest. It's a time that you spend resting and enjoying yourself. Something that you do to stop feeling nervous. Yes, you have to. Something you do for you to stop feeling worried. You look for things that excite you. You look for television programs. You look for events that can take away burdenness from your spirit or heaviness from your spirit. To relax your nerves. But this is what De David never knew about the power of relaxation. What made David to relax? What made him to relax? He felt his household enemies has been buried. Who are his household enemies? King Saul. Saul has been persecuting him. 
Jonathan has been buried. All the world laws of King Saul, they've been buried. The Philistines killed them in the Mount of Gibbon and hung them there. And some men from, from Jabez Gilead went to, went to see his bones. And they buried Saul, his arch enemy. So why should I fight? Let me go and drink and rejoice. Why should I pray again? I've gotten breakthrough. If you come to my company, you see my edge park. You see my Range Rover parked. You see my formatic park. You see my Mercedes. Uh, which one again parked? Why should I? Why should I? Why should I be going to church? And why should I be rushing to serve God as if I don't have sense? The powers that quench your prosperity, that quench your light. Because the anointing that is coming forth today is going to announce you. In the midst of scarcity, it's going to announce you. You didn't hear me. I said the anointing that is coming upon you today, in the midst of scarcity, it will announce you. In the midst of famine, it will promote you. In the midst of want, you will begin to give to the others. That's the anointing that's coming upon you today. But before that happened, God have to warn us. Remember, it's in the time of scarcity that God magnified the noise of the feet of three leprous men. That the sound of the feet of three leprous men became the sound of the chariots and the iron, iron-footed soldiers of Egyptian that the Syrian had and they flee and hundreds of thousands of them flee some of them die quite flee and the Bible said a, a cup of rice was sold for one, one naira and a cup of gari was sold for one naira it was in a farmer in a situation like this so what made him to relax why did he relax he felt his household enemies has been buried come on let me rejoice he never thought of the outside enemies. At times we rejoice because we have killed Goliath. We rejoice because my father now is the commissioner of education. We rejoice because my husband is now the MD of Shea. We forgot the other giants to kill. David relaxed that he has killed Goliath. Was he not a giant that was about to kill Goliath where we read now? It was another giant. But thank God for Abishai, who wasted the giant. David would have gone for it. Why did he relax? I'm coming. I'm taking you somewhere. <laughs> he felt there are no more outside enemies. No more enemies to fight. The powers that kill in the midst of prosperity, this is what they tell you. They tell you to relax. Now you are married. You don't need to impress your husband. Why should I impress him? Why should I wear those things that used to entice him? I can wake up and leave my bra. I will not wear bra and be going up and down. Why should I need to do my hair? I need to do my hair. It's my husband. Moreover, I wear hair net in the house every time. Why do I need to walk before my husband? I don't need it. I can walk like my mother. I don't marry him. I don't get her. Maybe my own. No, my own. Let me get them. After all, we do certificates. Certificate, you know, a certificate. I don't get them. I don't get them. This one, I'm an animal. I don't shoot them. Let me get them. Why should I? I don't need to cook any special food for him. Let me do normal for Lubuan. Normal, normal soup that he has been eating. Why should I keep myself to go go to find out lettuce foodies to surprise him? If anything I cook, he will eat. Don't need to surprise him. He doesn't have any choice. Thank you for that. I don't need to spend money on my wife. Why should I be spending money on her? I have bought her already. Should I go and purchase her again? Uh-uh. Bill, I say you don't understand. I purchased my wife. I don't need to text my wife again. Why am I telling her we love her? Me, me and her, we sit in the night. Two of us, we sit in the bed. Ah, the love, not the tire, you woman. Ah, love, money, love. Now, love, we go eat now. I've married her. I don't need to tell her I love you. 
I was telling her that because I was trying to brainwash her to bring her in. Why should I tell her now that I love you when she's already here eating with me? I better leave my family with this God's important thing. I don't need to spend test her. I don't need to buy her gifts. What am I still surprising her? Do you know how I suffer from Potako going to visit her in her school? Why should I buy gifts to give to her? I was doing all those things to get her heart. Why should I do it now to keep her? She's already my property. I don't buy her. It's like my chair in the house. Why should I surprise her? Why should I surprise him? Why should I go and buy something and give to my husband? Sweet that I bought this. I know you will love it. Why should I do that? Whether we sleep or wake up, love must continue. Whether the love rotty, the raw sour, it goes spoil, it goes repair itself. Marriage now. Nah. Marriage. It go work. Moreover, an African marriage, no divorce. My pastor will not even hear divorce. My pastor will not hear it. So I don't need to impress my husband. What for? I don't need to impress him. I don't need to make him happy. I have my marriage certificate. In fact, God gave me, church gave me. I don't need to satisfy my husband sexually. Now sex carry me into marriage. Now waiting, I go die for sex. I beg, I beg, I beg. I no be your mattress. If you no know, let you go, carry the ones outside. Settle them, but not carry them enter my house. I don't need it. And if you feel the one I'm giving you is not enough, do your worst though. At least I do. I do and take bomb picking for you. If you don't do for you, make you rest. Greedy man. Always wanting, wanting. Now it's the only thing what they do for this marriage. I have children for you. I don't even bomb boy for you. What do they look for? I better sleep. Why should I bother? Am I talking to somebody's heart? I'm showing you the enemies that quench the light of your marriage, the light of your destiny, the light of your prosperity. The first Tuesday in the month. I don't bump picking for him. Do I need to respect him? Papa Chukuma. Baba, Baba Tunde. Yeah. What am I respecting? He has seen my nakedness, and I see his naked. I've even seen his weakness. This is when when if you wash boxer. Come outside the pools. I beg my talk, make we hear something. These are things that quench your light in marriages. I don't need to do more. I don't need to impress her. I don't need to do extra. I don't need to respect my husband. I have to talk to my husband the way I like. After all, we are married. I can insult my husband. I can hurt my wife. With abusive words, no problem. In the night, I will torture her. She will forget. Marriage goes on. Why the heart is within. I'm showing the things that put off light in homes. I can neglect my children. Without teaching them how to bait. How are you happy to hear your child when they are grown up, even in their teenage or in their youth? Say, It's my father that taught me how to brush my teeth. It's my father. I've come to discover one of the hardest things that men do is to bait. It's not their fault because everything about man is fast. Everything. Man does not left for man. He will make and go to work and come back. Just to make sure he gets what he's pursuing. His woman that have that time to come back. Most men don't cope there. Thank God now they're babbin. Praise God. If they come their hair, we are useless. If they remember to bait, we are useless. We women were useless. If a man remembers, oh, remembers his trust, he's we, why am I married? The reason for a wife is to be my helpmate. 
those things that make me a man that I'm thinking of to take care of you thinking to provide home for you thinking to make sure you have children thinking to pay for school fees those things I'm running after you should run after me that is marriage so most men they can return and remove cloth and dump it here some women will say is it where you dump it let me help you they will remove their pants and dump there so how joyful are you when your daughter stand up and say my mother is the one that taught me how to brush my teeth brush my teeth brush my you are happy I say father what have you taught your children maybe you are a pastor you preach you teach smoke they come up for your head come up for your nose but your own children, you don't have time for them. Maybe you're a lecturer. You lecture. You are the best professor. Governors. People sit down to listen to you. But you have never taught your child one thing at home. Even your wife, you cannot even love and care. You are asking God to give you a child. <laughs> you see why Odin days, those days, as we are getting married, they will look for goats and give to you. If, where they don't have goods, they will give you small baby cow. If they have small baby cow, they give you hen or chicken. Or they give you pig. Is that, is that what they do those days? That day, you're after wedding, they must carry goods. Not goat to eat, though. Not cow to eat. Baby one. You know why they give They want to teach you how to care. How to tolerate. They will carry it and give to the man. They don't give it to the woman. To the man. So, you use it and begin to see how to care for a woman how to love a woman they use this thing to teach you my wife is too stubborn at home you don't care for her my wife is too naggy you don't listen to her my wife does not respect me you don't respect her by taking care of her if you do these things your wife has well what is he doing what she's doing then she need prayer, bring her to me. If you're in Facebook, find my address, bring her to me. I will help you. Don't neglect teaching your children how to bathe, how to brush, how to eat. Teach your children now how to eat. Teach your children how to dress. Teach them how to dress. Something happened one day. With one of my child on that son, he will go and wear he will go and wear um, sweater. I said no. I said, are you sweating? He said, I did that when I was small. My grandmother would tell me, remove. You don't wear this now. I said, he said, no, it's not style. Remove it. Somebody have to teach you. And today he dresses perfectly well without disturbing me. Some of us who wear flower blouse, flower skirt. You see my hand? Flower, blouse, flower. One of my son one day came here. Wore well, flower dress as in a lie. Go home and change. He said, but my cloth is not tight. I said, it's not a show of tight. Go and change. Before they will laugh you, let, oh, let me laugh you. Because if other one laugh you, me, I will be angry. I'm your mother. Go and change. He called me, said, why? I said, you don't wear flowered. He said, and I just saw it new. I said, that tell her need deliverance. You don't wear flower trouser and flower. He said that you wear plain flower or stripe or stripe of flower, plain or plain flower. You you don't wear flower. He make you make you look like goats that is purging. It makes it look like God. Oh, you don't think God has watched it before. <laughs> that means you didn't wear good. Teach your children how to dress. Start not to tell them when they're so close that it's too tight to the body. You say, no, losing is small. As a woman, you must not expose all your cups. You are creating unnecessary attention. 
everybody we, it's not a it's not a it's not a, 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 a breakthrough that every man that sees you chase you no something is wrong with you you are no, no, man. because every man cannot marry you a man cannot see a girl that is wearing with phone of 50,000 wearing nail polish of 10,000 her nails and her hand clothes and he's managing his life saying in, in, in butcher not butcher, what the, butcher I want to say God say you are my wife he gets a wife if you say you take God, you yourself go and I'll talk to her you don't understand me there are some things where God said to you, this person is your husband you will also say God, yes I heard you you the same God, appear to him to save yourself the embarrassment because if God appear, God will tell him, despite all these things you possess, submit, this is your husband. But you, where will you start from? Your shoe is not the equivalent to what she's wearing. So I would advise you go and look for your class. There are men that cannot, maybe God did not design you to marry a man that is driving Jeep. But why marry you, you will drive Jeep. But because your dress, your kind of dress in those men will never come to you. In this one, too much for me. And maybe not cracker. For all you mean, now you starch. You know, some people do get better packaging. They package like this. You go, see, see, they weigh carry 20 billion. Come get body. As in the waka, paka, paka. He said, hey, Jesus, this one too big past me. Do you know that from head to toe, everything there, no reach 10,000? Am I communicating to you? There are dressing you dress, you chase people away from you. I'm talking to my fellow women. So teach them to dress, teach them not to expose their body. Teach them not to do what? You are not a harlot. Your love is your private part. It's private. It can only be seen by your family, your father, mother, maybe in the house, you, maybe you are doing something, playing ball or something, or your husband. Teach them. Your breast should not be seen. It's private. We have so made breasts and everything public toilet. That even a man that is not ready to prize is ready to see. He said, even though I no go fit, make I, I look in a free. But those packaging is what a man sees afar and begin to prize and pursue you to marry you. Because he wants to see what is written. But now, the Bible is no more closed, it's open. So everything is written on the surface. So teach them how to dress. Teach them how to pray. Teach your children how to pray. Teach them how to pray. Make sure your children are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Teach them pray like this. Disciples went to Jesus. Teach us how to do what? Pray. Teach your children to pray. So when you are not there, something happened in my children's school one day. A child in the, in, in the classroom was choking to death. And my son stretched hand and lay hand and command the devil out. The boy got himself. Jesus, everybody was running in the classroom. He spoke. He said, Mommy, I used to see you the way you come. You said you should not pray for devil. Command him out. In the name of Jesus, he will get out. He said, Mommy, the boy almost died. Yo. The teachers have started shouting. Everybody ran out. Like, out. I said, the, the boy op- got himself, opened his eye. See, he doesn't know what to, did he drink water? No. What did he eat? Nothing. The boy just stand and be choking. And I say this. Anytime your child wake up in the morning, want to go to school, please, mothers, learn to touch the children's temperature before they go. A father will say, I better leave that in. That is why you're a mother. At least when they hug you, feed their temperature. If you before your child leaves in the morning, watch the eyes of the child. If the eyes of the child is weak, ask the child why. Is are you okay? Did you have any dream in the night? Did you have any dream you don't understand in the night? 
There's something you lay hand to pray, lay hand immediately to do what? Pray. Instead of hearing a child slumbing in school and died. That thing started from the house. But the mother is busy dressing, cooking. He didn't look at that child. Even if you, if you, if you meet up to have money devotion, pray. If you cannot, at least manage to lay hand on all of them. Let them go. Am I talking to you? Not only mothers, fathers. It's not bad for a father to wake up to join the wife to dress up the children. They are your children. This is the reason why these children grow tomorrow. They only only run a mommy, mommy, mommy. Say my children don't like me. Let me pay school fees. Let me pay for house. But you are never there for them. Am I talking to somebody's heart? I told you, God told me every first Tuesday. He said, go towards family. So teach them to pray. Teach them to read. Teach your children how to read book. Teach them to fast. Thank God so many schools now have engaged into fasting. They, I think they said the small, small one is 7 to 9. And there's a 7 to 8. They, I like, really like the way they can do it. I said, they say, no, 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 they have to fast too. I said, this was their mother. said, no, no, they are fasting today. They will eat in the house. They fast for one hour. At least picking where, small picking where you fast for one hour. You never fast. You don't fast. I was telling them, but this one, I said, no, they fast for one hour. We start their prayer first. For one hour, they fast before they eat. They pray before they eat. Teach them to fast. Is that okay? So they will not eat dominoes, eat belle food, eat, 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 belle go swear, bon bon go large everywhere. went to GRA those days. My husband took us to one restaurant. See, there's this uh, um, the, what do they call it? Fast food that he discovered. That he wants us to go that we will like it. That the ice cream is fine. And hence this children has been begging him for ice cream for long. We went. Immediately I went into the so we opened the door. The first boy we saw. My children, look, my daughter looked me and looked at her. As we entered, three of them, three boys and one girl, all of them. I said, What a welcome party. <laughs> we enter. As we enter, I begin to look. All the children there. I got my husband. I said, Sweetheart. I said, Can we buy that? He said, No, no, no. I brought them, let them leave. They have a place to play. Let, them, let me go and stay with them. Let Ruth go. Let him stay with them. Let them play. I mean, let them enjoy themselves. That ice cream, no sweet me. Because you know all I'm looking I'm looking at all the children that have been licking the ice cream. How they are? I said, No. Mama, option, full option. Children, full option. I said, No. 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 I kept quiet. We were, we were driving home. We got home. My children get and say, Honey, I better wait. So, you see this place? And we get, he said, Why? He said, it. You've been talking. I just, I just, that's why I told you, Stop. When we get home, I said, When we open the door, which three children do you see? He said, But that's not my children. I said, No, no, no. I saw it. This ice cream too sweet. No. I don't want. If you want to buy, buy once in a while. Bring in the house. Let everybody leak. Before the children leak and don't do, will I marry them? Will you marry them? After you have overfeed your children, you now begin to beg Pastor Jacob, please marry. Me too. I will say to you. Not everything when we pass us the sin, how will they talk? They call a girl that you want to marry. Only to get up from here to here, she has to do. With all the packaging inside. How can you notice your child is fat? Just like I know my son is plump here, we give him milo to be drinking. What kind of wickedness is that? What kind of wickedness is that? Your child is big. Or maybe it's not fat, it's on the thick bone side. It's plump. I'm not saying, get what I'm saying, I'm not saying fat is bad though. Some people are huge. That is their body weight. If they try to go down, there's, there's a fat I'm talking about. I'm not talking of somebody that is who jump? That's not what I'm talking. I'm t- I want to see what you know what I'm talking about. Overweight children. Overweight children. As they sit on chair, chill with you. Wait, wait, wait. This 
catch everybody sat down. So I'm chopping my father's money. Which stupid money are you chopping? Which stupid money are you chopping? I know this video will go viral. Please save your children and stop deceiving yourself. If you are that wealthy, go and look for a chef and begin to prepare low fat meals in your house. Take away beverages. Give them uh, um, all these hard teas. Let them drink. Reduce the taste places you take them to that make them consume this fat. Put them to exercise. I understand. When they're on holidays, they must add. That one is natural. That's not what I'm talking about. Allow them to eat when they're because once they return, return to school, watch all your children and they will leave. But then they run to school, trust Nigeria kind of education now. Then they go, come back, come back. You say all of them will dry up. Leave them. This one is holidays. Heaven is giving the aid. Is it not God that gave the earth holidays? Why, why are you laughing as if I'm laughing? Lie. So, fast. I have said that. Teach them how to fast. Have I said so? Yes. Teach them how to drink. Teach them how to drink. This, I, I better rather use myself for example. My own, I started praying about it. As I'm coming to church, my children, at the time I started carrying cartons of caprison. Because one mom, mommy, I want to capri, caprison. Caprison. I said, God, the sugar in this. I would do them to the doctor. Say, we don't harm them, leave them, they should drink. But it's affecting their teeth. Their teeth will be, the, the children's teeth will begin to crack. The teeth will begin to get rotten gradually. That's why most of you both children don't. You can't, if you touch me, I will call 911. Why didn't you call 911 for your teeth? I don't know if I'm talking to you. Did you watch almost all of them, their teeth? All of them are using this thing, they're fixing the teeth. Because the teeth are gone. Why? Chocolate, sweets. If you want to harass the child, they will call 911. Not to eat. So please control. And I'm begging you. If you are, if you are a producer, producing children biscuits, producing children drinks, we are begging you in the name of Christ. Help us to reduce the sugar. You can make it sweet with honey. You can make it sweet with other things. But not with sugars. That Some of these, if you eat it, you say, what will come out from your mouth is blood of Jesus. Sugar in the biscuit. The, the, the biscuits are sugary. The drinks are sugary. Can you help us to reduce it? You can still make it sweet, not to hurt them. But make it, reduce the sugar in it. Content in it. Thank God nowadays, People are introducing fresh juice. If you're going to afford it, please do it. It will save you and your family. Get it blend, whatever thing, the way they combine for you to be blend. Let your family take fresh juice. Blend it before they put it in the fridge. Serve it on the, on the, on the dinner table. You will feel better with it. Praise the Lord. That is what I'm showing you. Don't leave the responsibility of your children to, your, to the school teachers. To your pastor, to your mother, to your wives. Stop pushing, training your children to your wives, to teachers. Teachers cannot train your children. In fact, the assignment they give teachers, they give the student to do it. That's why you see your children come back with so many notes. They will tell the teachers to so the teacher will give the children assignment and tell them to go to Google and do the research and give. He will use the research to do to teach them. So let's stop. Not all, but I'm telling you majority. Teach them to give. What did I say? Teach. Begin to teach your children to give. Don't come to church without giving your children offering. Teach them to give to God. Use now to keep poverty and death out of their life. There is it that scatter it and yet increase it. Begin now to. If it's possible, I'm not telling you to do. I do it. There are covenants. God told me, anytime you are pregnant before you go to deliver, he said, cast a seed. I use it for my children. Before I put to bed, I make sure I carry a seed that costs me something to come to the altar to drop it. I don't just drop. I say, God, buy this seed. Anything that I want to take my life and take my baby's life. Because going to delivery, 
is between life and death. Let's be honest. Anything that wants to kill me, kill my seed before birth or after birth, let my seed kill them in this altar. I do it for all my children. I come to drop it. I write on, I don't put it even in pastor's hand. It was one I put in pastor's hand. My, pastor, my husband's hand is a pastor. I write it, my delivery seed. Then I carry 50,000. 70,000, 40,000 I carry it. Then after delivery, I'm still in the house. I'll package a seed and give somebody to come and drop for me. God just to say thank you. As I'm going for all the mina, mina, minization. Yes. I used, you see, look at the bed. Say, hence men has learned how to shoot without missing. There are children that were bent normally. They went to take immunization. They bent. You never seen them before? You never, you never seen them before. I said, God, all my days of going for immunization, they will not give many of my child expired drugs. There won't be any mistake. Me and my children, as we are going for take the injection, Spirit of God, by my seed, destroy every mistake. It's wisdom. I'm not telling you to do, but I did it. It worked for me. Any day I'm going for me, I drop it. Immediately I return from hospital. I, I yes, two days, three days. I'll give somebody, come and drop the seed for me on the altar. I will talk into it. I say, go and drop it for me. Somebody say, wisdom. Learn to give. Teach your children to give. Teach your parents. Teach your children. I said it in the morning during work as it is. You know so? Teach your children to give to your parents. When I say parents, don't be partial. Don't give only to your mother's side and not give to your husband's mother's side or father's side. Anytime you're going to visit your husband, mother, and father, don't go empty. It's a shame. What did I say? If you don't have anything, carry popo. Carry popo and carry 50 50 naira and put it in their hands. Oh, yeah. We come, went, came to visit grandma. Oh, look, you carry, God, even if it's carry, three cups of carry. You go, grandma, we came to greet you. Ah, you came today, yes. Oh, yeah. Start from the first child. Grandma, thank you. He said, God bless you. Everybody, give to him. You are sowing a seed. As long as he stretches his hand to bless those children, none of them will be little. None of them will die. The light will not be put off. Then this is the greater harvest. When these children grow and marry, they will also carry their children to come to you. Because you have taught them the pathway of life. Some of you, you are stingy to your parents. You think you are smart. You don't care about your parents. There's another one again. Oh, Dakabasaka Libra. When you are giving to your parents, because you gave money to your parents, you talk to them anyhow. You insult them anyhow. Sir, we are calling. With, eh? You need money again. I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. You people should take it easy. Oh. Ah, I beg, I beg. We will every time money, money. I beg you don't do. People know what I'm passing through. I beg, it's okay. So, thank you. I beg, I have no choice. Your own parents. Remember when typhoid fever were killing children, they didn't allow you to kill you. Remember when you have cough, they use leg and carry you to one teaching hospital. Sleep in teaching hospital till you were not dead. Remember when Krokro Zakwa finish your bomb bomb. Zakwa, finish your bomb bomb. It's your parents that were rubbing this same bomb bomb you're using to doing cast up. It's them that were rubbing things on it for the Zakwa not to kill you. Remember, it's your mother and your father. Now that it's all like this, one day you too also will be like this. Your children will do worse to you. It's not a cause, it is written. If you have it, place your mother-in-law in salary. Place your parents on salary. Start with something. You can start with 2,000. It does not matter the amount. One thing I like about giving, it don't compete with anybody. Consistency will make you to overtake. Start with 2,000. Mommy, every mo month. Okay, no bank. I will go to the park of my village. Where they, I will go there. Grab 2,000. Mama, Papa, give to them. This side, give to them. The side that is richer should be less. The side that is poorer should be more. If it's your 
you as the woman, your family side is richer. You can place them. 10,000. 10, your husband's side, baby, is lesser. You place them 15, 15,000. Are you getting what I'm saying? In so doing, mother in law be winch. Papa in law, they fly. You know, go get those prayer point, points. I hear. Anything that wants to harm you, your mother in law will put his neck, make him harm, and this girl no go die. A woman came to me. I'm sorry to expose her. She's here. Her mother, her mother in law died. She came here. One day she came and she was hitting her breast. Here, blessing Gina. He said, What my children didn't do for me? What my children didn't do for me? This woman blessed and blessed and blessed and blessed her. Cry, cry, cry. I said, Mama, is okay. He said, My children are avoiding me. But my son's daughter is the one carrying me up and down. She's the one that brought me to city. She's the one that wear me clothes. She's the, see clothes. He said, Look at this style. She's the one. The one I wore last day, she's the one that saw it for me. And you tell me that woman will suffer. She will never suffer. You will tell me she will, she will die in the midst of her children. It will not happen. What you sow is what you reap. Instead of you to hear my sermon and begin to practice, you say, You don't understand, but my mother in law already is a winch. She hates me. Start the winch in her. Start what? Start de winching, de winching with love. By the time you send her apart today, one of the winch don't leave her. You send her money tomorrow, one of the winch at her back don't leave her. Before you keep on showing you her for one money, all the winch grab will do meeting and do what? Leave her. If she refuses to change, leave her. Bible says your good will turn to be a cause of fire on her head. But for your giving, heaven will reward you, earth will reward you. Say amen. amen. Don't be stingy to your parents. You are driving cars. If you have money, buy cars for your parents. If your parents are staying in the village, they are dying. Look for a house in the city, pay for them. Don't bring your parents to live with you. They will scatter your marriage look for money if it's self-contained that is enough for you pay for them mama and papa stay here mommy oh yeah, see go there and be selling gare let her carry gare of 20,000 in the morning as long as she, she wouldn't disturb you she will be eating her food seeing you seeing her children children in her longest life carry her and dump in the village every day she's going for burial burial of her mother very of Tunday. But we will go better one day. We say, okay. <laughs> I'm showing you how the powers of darkness quench light. How they quench light in the life of David. I'm using it to relate to our families. Now some of you say, I don't need to respect my wife. Or be kind or be generous to her. I said it in the morning. There is this wickedness that is going on, and so many people are not aware of. Most men are very stingy to their wives. When I mean stingy, you will not, there's no way they will tell you you will believe it, except you are involved in it. They can buy clothes they are wearing of thousands. You know, men's clothes are too expensive. Before you see a woman clothes that reach hundred, eh? It's too much. Who go? Who go buy them? Except politician or people that have made it. But you see, men only their shoe fifty-eight thousand, only belt seventy-two thousand, polo they wear twenty-five thousand. What they take polo twenty-five thousand? They do. Are they mad? But that is the man's word. That is the truth. There are things are naturally expensive. It's, it's not because it's your husband. Now you will buy and look good. But when it's time to give your wife money to buy for your son, you will carry 10,000 and give to him. Are you stingy or you are not? I call my husband. I say, my husband, come, come, come. Through my window. I say, what is happening? He said, what do you mean? As I came out in the morning, I said, let me sit out here, take vitamin C in the morning. 
vitamin, vitamin A. I discovered something. He said, what is it? I saw cars. This Rumokoro garage is full of cars. And all of the men has been coming up. Is there anything going on? My husband laughed. He said, men have decided to come to market. Men have decided to do what? Because if the wife tells you that one cost that uh, bucket of tomatoes she used to buy 703,000, you will not agree to give. So the best thing, go market yourself. My husband came and said, you see, I said, look. He said, my wife, what you're saying? He said, men are true. The market is full of women. But that day, men, I said, people are shopping because of the lockdown. You need to see bags of rice. But if it's your wife that says, transfer 300. I say, ah! Take it. What a greedy woman you are. Bag of rice. Bag of beans. Bag of curry. They're not oil. Of cartons. You see, the way they're loading boots. Some carry two car. So you be packing inside. But let your wife make list. Just to... Cook soup. I beg, I beg, I beg, stop. I beg, take 20,000 if you're not going to do you. They're going to eat them like that. After all, am I not trying? Did I not build a house? Did I not build a house for your parents? Uh, who would do like me? I beg, I beg, I beg. Didn't I buy you a car? Is your children not schooling in the best school? I beg, I beg, make, let me hear something. Truly, you've tried. She go to tell the mother, mommy. I don't understand my husband. Shh. Your mother. Stingy. Shh. The mother where you carry cannot be buying for you. Shh. Your papa will marry how many years? What did he give me? Shh. <laughs> no meeting for the marriage. Shh. Shh. Give here they go, they come back. It do for you. Like, at the best in law. It's okay, mommy, if that is what you said, no problem. The woman is dying in her heart. And as the relation will come. I told you, anytime you see a man is giving something to somebody, the wife is angry. At times, don't judge the woman, ask questions. The same woman you gave 20,000, one cousin will come. Hey, brother, hey, my mommy is a beg. He doesn't, ah, you people don't have anything to, oh, well, God said we should have. Sweetheart, please give me that my bag. That my bag I kept, we brought it. He carry wraps of 100,000. You push, you manage. And you not tell the woman, please bring water for her to drink. Are you seeing? Am I exposing something here today? Say, a, a, a wife too wicked. A wife not a dream. A wife not a dream. Then give person something. The woman too wicked. <laughs> hey, Pastor Beverly, talk. I don't need to be generous to my wife or be kind to my wife. I don't marry him, I don't keep him. Whether the generous again. Abby, she is my property. I, I said it in the morning. I don't need to repurchase her again. If she tear, she go repair herself. She go meet up Bioma, Bioma will sow her. Abby, husband, is husband easy to find? The husband is not easy to find. The husband is not easy to find. And the bridge is damaging. Bridge is damaging. Why should I call my wife to order? Why should I call my wife to order? Why should I tell my wife this is what is hurting me? <clears throat> she will feel I'm not a man. <laughs> Things will be going wrong in your marriage. You cannot call your wife. My wife, sit down. This thing you did is wrong. What made you to do it? She will talk. Okay, because I did this. No, this is the reason I did this. Okay, if this is this hurt you, I'm sorry, but don't try this next time. That is a man. What did I call it? That is a man. 
that things will go wrong in you. I beg. I don't feel like, I don't want to talk. I don't want to run. I'd rather pour out my bitterness, my heart to my friends. You know, I go to your friends. She is my wife. Leave her more. Leave her. No get thank God. Respect for me. No, they respect me. If ask him to define that respect, you, you will run and break this glass. At times, what we call respect, if they analyze it, you will get tired. You will get tired. I'm sorry. You will choose to pour out your pains to your parents. After all, they will tell me what my ears want to hear. Matthew 18, 15. Matthew 18, 15. Why is it that when husband and wife are having issue, the man cannot call his wife and put his home to order? Rather, they keep malice. Moreover, if their brother, your, their wife or their husband shall trespass against you, go. Everybody say go. Everybody say go. Go and tell him or her his what? Fall. Between thee and who? Him. Eh? Eh? If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Now Jesus talk about the Bible. You and your husband, wife will be having problems. Two of you will not talk to each other for months. Every time you have problem, it's your wife that comes to beg you for peace to reign. There's every time you have issue, your, your wife will come and your husband will come and beg you for peace to room. If they don't beg, even when you are wrong, you become a kimbo in your wrong. And your house is born as a man. No. My wife, sit down. Why are you doing this? And some of us, wife, oh, if your husband mistakenly tell you who you are, Boko Haram will enter the house. You will not eat again. There are women you don't dare tell who they are. The same way, men. There are men you cannot tell my husband with all respect. This thing you did is wrong. You will not see money in that house again. And you women, or dopa, waiting for your husband to give you to eat. Is there anything wrong with your hand? Is your hand like this? Do you, are you having kuturu leprosy in your hands? When your husband, when you tell, for instance, you tell your husband what is right, he will close CBN. If he was managing to give you two thousand in the morning, he will not say anything again. Why? He's telling you he's the controller, chief controller officer of your life and destiny. How can you be in a marriage? One year, two years, you're not doing anything. Depending on your husband. How can you, how can you be wicked to depend only on your husband? Are you not coming from a family? Your parents didn't train you. Your mother that labor for you will she drink from you. Your father that labor for you won't eat, eat from you. How much more will your husband give to you without it being offended? Your parents tomorrow. Maybe now they are old. The things they used to do, they cannot do. You come to the sweetheart because you have to romance him specially to get money. As God Almighty. And you tell me it's Christianity. And you tell me it's submissiveness. It's oppression. Let's preach what the Bible says. And if you are the woman, because you have money, you are the one that is most earned. And your husband dare not talk. You will lock the central bank. You're a wicked woman. Learn to separate your issue from finance of the home. If you feel you don't want to talk to your wife, count the 50,000 and drop on the table. Walk away. Your children must eat. You need to hear some men. I, can, I don't want to give him anything. Because he, how dare she to ask me where I'm coming from. For one week, your wife has been begging neighborhood to eat. And tomorrow they will reconcile. They will take you, sweetheart. I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Or Dopa, you also fold hands day. Dorate. See, fold your hand. How can a woman with children fold her? You're not doing anything. What a mother you are. You have mouth to talk. You are depending on your husband. You've been praying, prayer contractor. You've been praying for your husband. Where will you pray for yourself? You are meant to pray for your husband. It's a life ministry. Also pray for your destiny. You have a destiny. 
You also have brothers and sisters that can cry. You help them. By the time you come to, honey, my father said you need twenty thousand. Sweetheart, my mother said you need fifteen thousand. Tom Tom, my father said you need. Before you know, you've called all the names. It's not humility. A good man should empower his wife to stand for adventure. There is no road that is straight in this life. If you are walking, you don't want your wife to walk. If there's nothing that is okay for you, push her nothing. Sit down. To, see, family business is not by say the spirit of God. It's by discussion. I don't know if you're getting me. My wife, I said with once. This thing is making me travel. I'm not only there. You don't say with one. You say provision. Stay closer to the house. Stay in room Ukuru while I stay far off. So here it will be easy for you to touch home. Family business is what you discuss. I'm working in UBA. You are working in share. UBA is paying me. 500,000. Share is paying you 1.2. Sweetheart, you will leave UBA for the sake of our children. Monthly, I will be paying you 100,000 apart from allowance. Then look for something else you can do nearby that will give you convenience for our children that will take care of me and you. That is family. You don't, you don't lock your wife in the house. What, 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 is, what is she looking for? We're not gift to her. These women, women empowerment. We're not talking of women empowerment. We're talking of Adi Amama. Should in case. Paraventure. So it won't be when one fall, the other will be stranded. The Bible says this is marriage. When one fall, the other one should lift him up. We passed off, learn to preach what is truth and take away our traditions. So the Bible said in First Corinthians 6 7 and Galatians 6 1. I should be rounding up. Have 10 minutes to go. First Corinthians 6 7. Why don't you give me give me a new living? Let me just break the coconut simple. Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, okay, this is Galatians first. You who are godly should gently and humbly do what? Help that person back onto the right path and be careful not to fall into the same word, temptation yourself. Give me First Corinthians 6 7, new living. Even to have such lawsuits with one another is a defeat for you. Husband and wife, they go caught. Why not just accept the injustice and leave it at that? Why not? Why not let yourself be what? Pastor, I've been allowing myself to be cheated for years. Still, you know the change. There are some because every time the husband say, "I'm sorry," power mic. She begin to feel. I mean, the control man. Who are you to control your husband? If, if you think what I'm preaching is for you to ride over your husband, you are digging your grave. The Bible said it clear. The woman was created for the man. The man is the head of the woman. Axe and matchet, they can never do competition. Matchet has its function. Axe has its function. If you say what a man, I've said it, what a man can do, a woman, anyway. two of you stand there and unite and see the one, the peace will go further. Maybe we, by that, we'll carry you up and know you are the champion. Man is man. But what I'm trying to teach you is balance that will make you not to crash while you're head. Is that okay? So please. Call your wife in order. Allow peace in your home. Let me eat. 
and enjoy my labor and goodies in your eating. Don't reject your source. Some of us, once we see prosperity, we reject our sources. We reject the ways we pass through to make the money. What is your source? It's your God. How did you climb to this place? You were giving to the poor. Don't climb there and stop giving to the poor. How did I climb to this place? I list the weightiest person on earth. I used to, when I used to tell them it's not big gate, they thought if big gate is because he wants to make noise. It's not the it's no way. I don't want to say some things. Let me leave it on that note. It can be worthy in the things of the eyes of the world, but in the eyes of God, it's no word. Anybody that's not rich towards God is not rich because his soul will be stripped off of from him. The greatest prosperity, I've given an example here, one of the Tuesdays, is for you to see the need in the house of God and solve it. It's the greatest thing you can do in the sight of God. Pastor, how do you buy this a year? Please, I want to be given monthly. I will transfer so much money to you. It must not be monthly. Make sure there's detail in this house. Pastor, how do you pay your workers? Okay, this is what you pay. Monthly, I want to join. I want to be paying. As long as you do it, all the open doors on earth is yours. And you cannot die in the midst of your world. Those who sponsor the gospel, those who sponsor the work of God, those who give for the fundraise of the kingdom of God, God declared them as highest on earth. So I understand. If you know that thing you were doing that made you great, when you become great, don't stop it. That was what brought down Jacob, um, David, or Jacob. Let not forget the rules. There are rules that brought you up. There are rules that make you become who you are. Physical, spiritual rules. Don't forget them. There are rules, laws that gave you wealth. Keep them. Keep them. Don't forget them. If it's your wife that assisted you to become somebody, don't throw her away. If it's your husband that helped you to become, don't despise her. Some, of, some people, when they're getting married, they will say, let's do joint account. I have handled these cases many. When it's the woman, the money is more. The man will agree, make them do joint account. The woman will foolishly join, they will be doing joint account. You see what I use it? Foolishly. They'll be doing joint account. Once the man become independent and become rich, joint account will stop. This case have judged, judged it many. Must joint account show that you love each other. Another trouble of joint account, the man decide what the money will be used for. And present it to you in a meeting. You now say, but honey, he said, no, what I said is what will happen. You want to say, are you trying to show me it's your money? What? The woman, trust woman, for the sake of peace, is okay. That's African woman, is okay. European woman will tell you, how dare you? He will tell, before you finish talking, he has got a phone to call 911. He will tell you, it's my fucking money. But in Nigeria, your mama goes, shh, shh, no talk, no talk. Give him everything. Give him everything. No talk. No talk. Verse Versailles is the same thing. When the man is the money, he will give you a can number. He'll be withdrawing anyhow. When it's your turn, you will lock everywhere, divert it to your own family. I've judged these cases. Wickedness in small, small places. So don't, if it's your job that gave you weight, don't neglect it. If it's your, if it was your skills, the things you know how to do, don't neglect it. You know how to cook. That is why people started coming to you open. Immediately you open this is Potak Bang Bang Potakot business. I must say, this is one of the winch that is killing businesses in Potakot. You will see them cooking very well. If you eat, you lick hand. Oh, they will now move to Jaro open headquarters. If you open food, water will be inside. Workers that are working, they will not agree to pay them. 
They will use the money they generate from the business instead of pumping the money back to the business, getting property to give ease to the business, create more opportunities. They will use it to go and look for a second wife. I use it to look for a girlfriend that will pay for her somewhere else. That is what is making you a real man. How can you be eating only a goosey, a goosey, a goosey? Forget there's a way that cement the right unto a man, but the end thereof is what? Is that? If I'm a young girl, you are rich, a married man, you meet me and you give me money, I will tie you. I will lock you. I'll be pastor. They hear my talk. I go lock. Thank you, Lord. If you speak, I go lick him. If you say shut up, I go tell you, yes, sir. I have nothing to lose. I know the bomb picking for you. I don't also cruise my own on that bridge, you don't know. My own is to give you some paper. My course. Once I finish, you give me my money. So I have nothing. Your burden is not my burden. My own is only to enjoy with you when you want to be want to spend money. Your wife is to stay with you when you are suffering. This is how small small wickedness in small small places that nobody wants to talk about but the children are crying but they are crying never hard because they are seeing the pains of their mother they are seeing the pains of their father once you get to a certain level of wealth these are what quench your light I was talking about potato business let I forget they use the money and go for chief tithing the next thing they want to be chief tithing the workers will be crying. We've not been paid for four months. He said, Don't worry, I'll pay you people. Uh, admin, pay them 10,000. 10, Next month, I will pay you. And they're laboring. And you say, God will not punish you in that business. Their wives are crying. Their children are crying. They're borrowing in the street, eating. But they're working for you. If you know you are here or you're hearing my voice, you are sitting on the salary of people, man, you will die. If you don't release their money or this lockdown, you took all their money, not that you are working hard to pay, but you're doing nothing about it, you will die. Coronavirus will waste you. You will die. And your children, their own suffering. No man will show mercy on them. Go and learn from former wealthy men that are nothing. Their wives are crying. Their children can't go to hospital. They are borrowing money, but the father is working. Five months, you will not pay them. And you come out. Chief. Buru buru. am I talking to somebody today don't get to a point of your light you don't need to consult your pastor that's what brought David down before David do anything before he will go to consult but this time he doesn't consult anymore he feel I know how to do it I'm out of danger mindset why should I pursue I'm not the king I own the people I own their words. I own everything. Why should I bother myself? He forgot there's something they call outside enemy. David went down. Because he felt everything is available for him. He fell. He has gotten the throne. He has gotten the authority. Everything obeyed him. He has the influence. He has the money. He has the authority. He has the fame. So David thought all the giants are finished. Without knowing a giant is still waiting. Why did he go faint? Time is up. Why did he go faint? Why? Number one, he had no more dreams. No more. Why do people faint? No dream. Number two, over dependent of the of the of the self of the previous experiences. I get them before. I be this now. 
No, don't stop there. Aspire more. Over dependent of your previous experiences. I, I don't need to go and disturb God or my pastor. I've done it before. I know how to do it now. Third, negligence. What did negligence mean? Negligence to spiritual things or spiritual order. Negligence to instruction. Negligence to revelations. Look at how David, the first king in the whole world that was a king, a pastor, a, a priest, and what again? A prophet. Look at how he fall yakata into the hand of Bathsheba. Look at it. Give me Second Samuel 11. Second Samuel 11, verse 1 to 4. First, Second Samuel 11. In the spring of the year when kings normally go out to war, kings they fight but they stay for home. David sent Joab and the Israelite army to fight the Ammonites. They destroyed the Ammonites army and laid siege of the city. Rabbi, however, David stayed behind in Jerusalem. Late one afternoon, neighbor said, Late one afternoon. <laughs> uh, the devil is really going like a rolling lion, seeking who to devour. After his midday rest, after he does sleep for water bed, stretch himself. He doesn't pray again. He doesn't go to any secret place of God anymore. David got out of bed and was walking on the roof of his palace. And as he looked out, somebody says, as he looked out <laughs> over the city, he noticed one supergetty. Utuewe. Tomato jaws. Of unusual beauty taking bath. Verse 3. A whole king, David, a prophet. He says, Someone, you know, let them rest. You know, no trap. Some relationship are traps to take life. That's why when you go to sleep, the thing will be sweet more than it will be sweeter than the one Adam did with Eve. You didn't know devil has fueled it to destroy you there. He sent someone to find out who she was. And he was told. He was told. They tell him. No, they don't tell him. She is Ben Shabbat, the daughter of Elam. And the wife on that side, they told him, of oh, you ride the hair tie. See his ear, did he hear? Verse 1, what did David say? Then David sent messenger to get her. And when she came to the palace, he slept with her. She had just complete, completed the purification rites after having her menstruation menstrual period. Then she returned home. Bam bam continue. You see how realization brought him. So that you not say because they say lock down or lock up, you lock your destiny. Don't stop praying. Don't stop pursuing. Don't stop thinking. Don't stop aspiring. Say I hear. They say lock down. The latest law that we do, some men I was sharing with my husband, so they, will, they will drive off and go lock in somewhere. We'll be pastor with the judge case now. Go lock in. When it don't they lock in, finish, you go come back, has come they lock down. Why did David faint? No new invention, no reasons to pursue. Number five, why did he faint? He doesn't need God, no God mentality. I can handle it. He have this stupid mentality. I can do it. I can handle it. I don't need to consult God. Why did David faint or fail? Distraction from people, invitations, friends, women, men. Three, the enemy called friends. That's where I stop. The enemy called what? Who are they? That your loyalties. There are three sons that are warlords in the camp of David. Who has heard of Job? Who have heard of Job? Job in the Bible. He's number one. He's the captain of all the hosts of David's army. Now, Job have two brothers that are captains too. These three men. Are war lords. That is, if David does not want to go war, he said only three of them can waste, can kill 500 people at the same time. But these guys are satanists. 
The enemy caught friends. That's where I stop. At times when you relax, don't forget that the people you call your friends, they might end up being your what? Enemy. Who are they? Enemy called friends. Your loyalists. Job and the brothers. Sahel and Abishah. Three of them. Remember when the king said he was thirsty? Who will break into the camp on the Philistines? Thirty of them killed hundred and thousand human beings just to fetch water from the well of well of Philistine and give to David. Take drink. Such person should you joke with them? But they were at the destruction of King David. <laughs> For some of you that love your friends more than your wife, you love your friends more than your husband. My best friend, my best friend, bestie. It was Abishai that told David in 2 Samuel 21 17. He said, From today, don't go to war with us again. Least you quench the light of Israel. The same Abishai, the brother of Joab. The same Joab and his brother in 2 Samuel 18 14 to 15 went and killed Ab Who killed Absalom? Joab. Who is Absalom? The son of David. David said, For show Absalom. Let not a stripe of his head drop on the ground. Bring Absalom life. Did you hear me? They called him. Did you hear me? They say yes. They went. Absalom says a lie. What shall be done to the king's enemy? Quite the opportunity. Absalom, an oak tree, catch Absalom because his hair. The only person in the Bible is a man. The Bible called beautiful. Like Lucifer in the Bible is only Absalom. The Bible says he's as more beautiful than a woman. His hair, they call himself rich grand. While Absalom was running, his hair, oak tree picked the hair and caught his neck at the oak tree. Joab went. The king's son used knife, cut off his hair and brought for King David. Best friend, be careful that those you train, they will not kill you tomorrow. Be careful, your best friend. Be careful. Jesus Christ say man's fools are that of his household. Who keep Abner? Abner. Who keep Abner? The captain of the host of King Saul. Who kept him? Abner was the captain of the host of King Saul. After Saul died, Abner came and submitted to David. He said, you know now, you was a boy. I have to obey my master. Forgive me. Now it's done to me that the hand of God is upon you. Watch. He went to meet the whole Benjamin. I said, please submit to David. He went to gather the whole Israel. Please submit to David. Abner and I came to see David to tell David, I have submitted the whole nation back to you. You can rule. Let me go in peace. As Abner was going, Joab was returning from battle. Him and his brother Abishai. And they were told that Abner came to greet David. Now I asked David, did you leave him alive? He said, for what? We have made peace. Please let this war stop. Let's fight our enemies instead of fighting among our Israelites. He said, yes, sir. He left. Him and his brother, they pursue Abner. And called Abner, come, let me tell you. Carry dagger, stab him in his ribs. Hold the dagger until he bleeded and died. Why? Because during King Saul, one of the battles they went, Abner killed their brother, Seher. They've been carrying it in my heart since that years. And Abner that came to make peace with David left in peace. They pursued him and killed him. They were helpers of King David's destiny, but they are destroyers of his kingdom. Who is helping you and is killing you? Who is helping you and is killing you? That David have to cry in 2 Samuel 3.39. The first day I saw this scripture, tears come out, came out of my eye. That's where I stopped. I'm true. 2 Samuel 3.39. David cried. He said, Ah, I am this day weak. Imagine King David. Though anointed what? King. And this man, who are these men? The sons of Zurai. Who are sons of Zurai? 
Joab, Asahel, and Abijah. His three warlords, captain, forefront men, but they're the killers of his destiny. Be too hard for me. Look at the cause he released. The Lord shall reward the, the doer of evil according to his wickedness. When David was about to die, come, my son, come. When David was about to die, after blessing his son Solomon, he heard this Solomon. He said, Before I die, avenge me of the sons of Zurah. Make sure you kill them. Don't I'll make sure you kill them. Wait for them to die. If you don't do it, every blessing I pronounce on you will not stand. He raised his hand. Long live the king, Solomon. And David passed on and died. Immediately Solomon became king. <laughs> they throw him to the that day, that day. He pursued Joab. Joab ran to the altar. I heard his hand. He said, My father was also an altar. <laughs> I love Solomon. My father was also an altar. He was a prince. He was a king. He was a what? A, a king. He's also a prophet. Cut a sword. Slaughter him at the altar. Because the law said anytime somebody holds the altar, don't touch him. He said, no. This one, uh, this one is a, a source of the sword. You must die. Who is troubling you but is your friend? Who is killing you but is living with you in your house? Go and see them, my son. Be upstanding, we are going to pray. 